Thank you, Professor Johannesson, for being here. Um, I just wanted to ask you to briefly describe uh, the paper that you presented uh, at this Congress in New York. Uh, it is a paper that starts with uh, explaining what a modern view on what a mental disorder is, and that is called a dimensional view. It means that there are no strict borders between the different uh, uh, disorders like uh, psychosis, uh, almost psychosis or neurosis, but that it's a continuum from normality until you get a serious uh, psychological breakdown like a psychosis is. So it's, uh, that, that's what we call dimensions. It develops gradually from normality into uh, a psychotic breakdown and it's also gradual when it uh, comes to recover from, from the disorder. And it is in contrast to uh, viewing uh, mental disorders as uh, categories own discrete illnesses with a certain and, and discrete cause in a way uh, and, and uh, uh, to back this view we have had a lot of help from, from people who were researching genes because the, the latest years research on genes have shown us that there are no specific genes that contribute to, to mental disorders. There are small risk, increased risk in some people, but it's, it's a very small, small risk. So a lot of this is caused by uh, uh, coincidence and also uh, by environmental factors in a way, in, in relations to other people and, and, and whatever. So I talk about the dimensional view, uh, these uh, disorders developing in stages. Um, and I go from there uh, to uh, look into the possibilities of early intervention and the research we have done when it comes to re uh, early intervention in psychosis. And, and we have some very promising results uh, showing that if you are able to intervene early in the psychotic phase, and by early we mean uh, f uh, up to four weeks after the psychotic breakdown, and we compare that with people who intervene late in a way, then you see that early intervention more than doubles the risk for people recovering completely from psychosis in a 10-year perspective and, and be in full work, uh, have friends as other people and no symptoms and, and whatever. Okay, so you mentioned the word recovery. Uh, how, how do you define this? Uh, it's a very strict uh, definition when we talk science here and, and evidence based. So uh, you have to be without symptoms for the last 10 weeks. You have to be full time employed in ordinary work or a full time student. You have to live independently and you have to have more friends than the average psychiatrist. You said that. Uh, uh the organic research, the gene research, was very helpful to your research because, in the end, they show that you know the mental illness is nothing due to genes. Okay, so what's the point ha having then um, this congress here in New York, in the United States, where research has focused mainly on drugs, on organic causes, on genes? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, New York City is a nice place, so it's a good, good way of attracting a big audience. But it's also um, the place uh, where uh, it's a very important place in the history of psychiatry. Uh, and of course we want to influence uh, the uh, American way of thinking about psychiatry. For many decades now in, in, uh, in the US, treatment has been synonymous with, with uh, pharma, with uh, drugs. Uh, and we want to show uh, how many other possibilities uh, there are when it comes to psychological and psychosocial uh, treatment uh, approaches and, and strategies. Uh, we were just discussing about uh, the different psychotherapeutic approaches that you use within uh, your practice and in your research. And you said uh, CBT and uh, possibly psychodynamic uh, psychotherapy and how can these two different approaches meet or help each other in, in the recovery of patients? Yeah, that's a good, uh, good point. Uh, 
uh, because that's what they do now in a way, they meet. Uh, uh, the cognitive uh, therapies are being more and more influenced by psychodynamic thinking to understand the patient and the patient's motives. But uh, then again, CBT is much more structured and, and uh, easy in a way to follow for the patient when the patient is in a kind of confusional state. So it's, it's a good method to start with. And then if you have a good relationship with the patient, you can gradually move over in a more psychodynamic uh, way of meeting the patient and make the patient reflect on, on what has happened in life that has contributed to him or her being overwhelmed by these feelings in a way that results in a mental breakdown. And at this point uh, in therapy, uh, what's the role of dream interpretation? Uh, well, uh, in the CBT, uh, you have no role for, for, for dream interpretation, but in the psychodynamic psychotherapy, it's, it's a natural place, I, I would say. Like, uh, like uh, other thoughts you might have, uh, dreams are, in a way, disguised thoughts. So one wants to help uh, the patient with finding the meaning behind the, both uh, hallucinations, other thoughts, and, and dreams, in a way. It's, 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 it's only nuances of, of, of the same, that is feelings and thoughts connected to, to feelings and vice versa. Another um, point we tried and understand here in New York is uh, the difference uh, usage of the terms um, illness, so it is mental illness, it is a sort of uh, something else. Yeah. Well, Disorder? Uh, yeah, I, I think in, in, in the US and, and possibly other places they talk about illnesses. I, I don't think we do that in, 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 in Europe so much and in Scandinavia definitely not. We talk about disorders uh, or mental breakdown, psychological breakdown, uh, uh, because it is a psychological breakdown. It is when you are overwhelmed by your feelings and, and, and your the psychological apparatus that you have developed to sort out your feelings and, and deal with the feelings, when they are over, overwhelmed, then you get a kind of, of breakdown. It, it is no, no, no disease uh, uh, that you contract in a way. It, it's, 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 uh, yeah. So is it also a, a cultural issue that if we speak of mental illness, if we speak of schizophrenia, we sort of uh, put a, sig a stigma on patients? Yeah, I think uh, one should uh, acknowledge that people some places talk about illnesses because it could reduce the, the stigma, uh, because it takes the focus away from the relation and, and the environment in a way. May, for many people it's maybe easier to, to deal with uh, something that has nothing to do with yourself in a way. Uh, but uh, so that that's a, that's a reason uh, for some to talk about illnesses in a way, but uh, uh, disorder, uh, that is more uh, like syndromes, like it's, it's not so very strict defined, so, so I like to talk about psychosis as confusion, confusional states in a way, I think that's the best word for it in a way. Uh, Professor, I also wanted to ask you what you are doing in your country to prevent uh, psychosis or to work on early detection of prodromal sin symptoms and then you know yeah. have more success in the recovery of patients. Yeah, we have doing early intervention research and have developed early intervention strategies in Norway for more than 20 years and it, it's an international center together with the center in, in Melbourne in Australia that has done most in this aspect. And the first thing we try to do is to reduce what we call the duration of untreated psychosis. Because we discovered that in Norway and in most countries in Europe and around the world, the period from the person develops a psychosis until he or she gets proper treatment is about two years. And that's uh, very serious uh, because you can imagine yourself going on with this confusional state for two years without people helping you to correct it in a way. So uh, to uh, 
uh, improve the prognosis, the first thing you have to do is to reduce duration of entitis psychosis, that is to come in early. And to achieve that, you have to do two things. And the one thing is to inform, 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 inform. You have to inform the public about early signs. You have to inform the GPs. You have to inform the teachers and, and uh, other people working in the health sector and so on. And then the other thing is you have to have a low threshold for achieving help. So that when people want to have help for their problems, you must have easy access to the services. You must not have waiting time. Uh, uh, strict referral uh, routines and so on. And by doing that you can reduce the duration of untreated psychosis and that in, in, uh, in time then will alone give you a better prognosis for these uh, the serious disorders if you are able to intervene in a much earlier stage. And then, of course, the next step, and what we are trying to do many places around the world now, uh, is to intervene in the stage before the psychotic breakdown, what you call the prodromal uh, uh, stage. And, and the approaches are the same in a way. It's about information, it's going out in the schools to, to, to inform people, but also to detect uh, young people at risk. Uh, and most of these people are help seeking so you go to the child and adolescent units in, in the mental health system or you go to the GPs or you go to the school advisor, school counselors and so on and uh, allow them to in a way refer these patients to us for a, a kind of screening and we have been doing that for, for some years now and there are many such projects around Europe especially but also here in North America and, and uh, it seems that uh, uh, only a small fraction of those people that otherwise we think would have developed psychosis really does it. What, what is your feeling here? When you presented your paper, when you met your colleagues here in the States, what feel you did, you did you get from the American psychiatrist? An openness, an interest, to, you know, to a different approach? Uh, What's your feeling? Yes, uh, it's very open and I, and I think there is a kind of paradigm shift. Uh, our colleagues here tells us that they, they tell us that they think that uh, the biological treatments that are helpful have in a way now leveled out. Uh, they have plateaued. Uh, and uh, and uh, that we must look for other options in a way and and that is reflected also in the uh, national institute of mental health here in the us and and uh, the research funding coming through there so they are actually funding early intervention services now in both the east and west coast in 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 the us and there was a lecture here by uh, the director uh, robert heinsen uh, who outlined that program uh, and we are very happy for that so 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 they are doing a lot of good work in the US as well and um, you, you said something really interesting that here in the States it's just they they are back to I said 20 years ago you said to 40 years ago or 60. So, uh, 60 even yeah, yeah because I think what this conference is about, that is, in a way, psychological uh, understanding and, and psychosocial treatment. It, uh, in many ways, it started with influence also from Central uh, American milieus back in the 50s. Then they were the leaders in, in this field, in a way. But then it gradually faded out throughout the 70s. and. Uh, it went more over in a biological uh, direction here in the US especially and also in, in Europe but not to that extent in, in, in Europe and especially not in Scandinavia and the UK I think maybe in Italy as well so, so, uh, so now we are bringing some of the knowledge that was developed uh, in the US back to the US you could say so thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.